Hello, ev welcome everybody. I just wanted to let you know, we'll get started in a few minutes. We're just gonna give people a little bit more time to join and we'll start shortly. Okay, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and get started. I'm Jen Santos, Deputy Director for the City of Santa Rosa Parks. And as people are joining, we're just gonna be going over some basic information as we get started. Welcome to the Dutch Floor uh, Park Master Plan Virtual Meeting, um, a, a second in a series of three meetings. And I wanted to introduce the folks that are uh, on your screen as well tonight that are helping us. We have, um, two of our park planners, uh, Emily Ander and um, Tim Bernard, that'll be helping us behind the scenes to uh, work the questions and answers and assist us during the meeting to help with the virtual production of this meeting. We also have Haley Watterson from Plural Landscape Architecture Studios uh, that will be leading most of the presentation tonight. So let's go ahead and start with the next slide. And so um, I also wanted to uh, do some housekeeping here and read you some of the information we have before we get uh, too far along. To please silence your phones, all of our panelists and presenters, and keep your microphones muted if not speaking. Members of the public joining this meeting will have webcams and microphones muted. If you're phoning in to join the meeting and you choose to speak during the public comments portion of the agenda, for privacy concerns, the host will rename you to caller and only show the last four digits of your phone number. Additionally, the city of Santa Rosa is committed to providing a safe and inclusive environment free from disruption and will not tolerate hateful speech or actions. Everyone is expected to participate respectfully, or if necessary, the meeting will end immediately. I'm gonna turn it over to our host, Bernard, to explain how public comments will be heard at today's meeting. Yes, there will be two opportunities for present in the presentation for questions and comments. The facil facilitator will open the floor for questions and answers before each of two surveys. The host will lower hands until the public comment item is open. Once the facil facilitator has called for public comment, the facilitator will ask the public to raise their hand if they wish to speak. Those joining by phone may dial star nine to raise your hand. The host will call on those who have raised their hand. The, the host will unmute your microphone and your comment for your comment and then you will be muted when you are finished speaking. A courtesy timer will appear while you are asking your question or making your comment. The facilitator, co-host, or, co or host will respond to each question or comment as it is raised. You will need to raise your hand again if a follow-up question is generated by your response received. There is also an opportunity to ask questions throughout the presentation with the Q&A feature in your Zoom menu or toolbar and typing in a question. The host will keep an eye on these questions and will answer them in writing as time allows, or we'll ask the presenters to answer them live at intervals throughout the presentation. Any questions not answered during the presentation will be addressed during the questions and public comment portion of the presentation. 
Great, thank you, host Bernard. I appreciate it. And so if any of you have been able to read what we have on this uh, slide here, uh, this is our agenda of what we're gonna go over tonight, but I just wanted to thank you, first of all, for being here tonight and taking time out of your busy schedules to um, help us decide how to move forward with Dutch Floor. Tonight's gonna be really exciting because we get to uh, see what some of the comments and survey results were from our last meeting. So it's gonna be really, I think it's gonna be really fun tonight. And um, so let's just go through the agenda. We've made our introductions and we'll go over our, the project goals and objectives overall as a reminder. And we'll look at the schedule again. And of course, we're gonna review our results from the previous meeting and all of the online survey results. And then we're gonna take a look at what sort of master plan options uh, the Plural Landscape Architecture Studio has put together for us based on all of the feedback we've received. And we're gonna look at playground options as well. And of course we have question and answer period. And we'll talk about what is next after this meeting. And I'll just give you a little bit of a heads up in that direction that we are planning a third meeting um, that will essentially present all of the information we collect tonight, as well as an additional online survey. And we'll remind you of that again as we get towards the end. So let's, let's go ahead and get started with the next slide. So we, this is just a little reminder. This is a map of the city of Santa Rosa and that the city of Santa Rosa is divided into, can be, and it is for us administratively, divided into four quadrants. And each of these quadrants are, um, they're represented as park development impact fees uh, quadrant as well. So when we have development in these quadrants uh, for residential units, they have an option to provide city with parkland or in lieu fees. And in this case, we've collected in lieu fees and we are able to move forward with updating Dutch Floor Community Park. So um, the fees that are collected in each of these quadrants remain to be used for updating or expanding or creating new parks. And Dutch Floor was on our top of the list. And so here we are, this is the second in a series of three meetings. And um, it's just, this map is just basically the entire, the entire city here with um, a star where you can see uh, Dutch floor. And if you can also see on some of these, uh, some parts of the city, the trees, the red trees, those trees are identified in the general plan as locations where we could uh, uh, place new uh, additional parks. And so we've got a few in zone one, which is where Dutch floor is at, and one more in zone three, and the majority of them in zone two and a little bit in zone four. So you can really see how the city has developed over the years. So we just wanted to give you the bigger picture there in case you have any questions. And we'll go to the next slide. And so I'm gonna turn it over to Haley uh, and she'll take you through what we're gonna to do tonight. Thanks, Jen. Um, good evening, everyone. Thanks for coming. Um, we're excited to share what we've been up to um, over the past couple of months since we uh, met with you all last. Um, and just wanted to start off to talk about our, our overarching goals and objectives um, for, the, for the park and what we're focused on here. Um, you know, more than anything, we wanna create a safe and welcoming park and playground. Um, and that means uh, updating the playground to um, meet uh, the latest kind of safety standards. Um, and playground playing innovations. Uh, we want to improve the connectivity, um, accessibility and usability of the um, entire park, um, the ability to kind of move um, through the park on accessible paths. Um, and then of course, we're always thinking about um, making beautiful places. So we wanna preserve the beauty that the park already has with the many um, mature trees and beautiful lawns. Um, and really build on that, um, the qualities that are already there. And to do that, we'll be um, really focused on updating the two playgrounds that are there uh, currently and creating uh, more connectivity between them, uh, which we talked a little bit about during the first community meeting. Uh, we'll be updating the uh, adult fitness 
uh, offerings at the park. Uh, and uh, we'll be looking at updates to the paths to ensure that they're all accessible and meet the ADA standards. Um, and then some of the other park infrastructure that comes along with um, you know, updating a park, um, improving the drainage, um, new irrigation systems, new furnishings, um, and things like that. And um, just to give you a sense of where we are in this process, um, we're at the very beginning um, in the first phase, um, which we're calling the master plan and the community engagement phase. Uh, we started uh, in February and we'll be uh, working through this phase until, um, until the summer. We're here with you today at our second community meeting. Our first community meeting was um, uh, in February. And uh, the third community meeting will be sometime in early summer. Um, and as there'll be a couple of other points um, where we'll be presenting the, the master plan, there'll be a, a board of community services meeting and a city council meeting. And then from there, we will um, move into creating the documents that tell um, contractors how to build the park. Um, and we move into those phases. First, there's the 30 and 60% construction sets. Um, early, you know, late summer, early fall zone of 2021. And uh, from there, we'll move into the last phase of documentation um, in hopefully wrapping that up in late 2022. Um, from there, the project will get bid by um, uh, contractors and hopefully we can start construction um, in sometime in 2022. Um, and as you all know, these are our draft schedules. <laughs> schedules are, uh, can change for various reasons, but this is kind of the general sense of, um, of the flow of the project. So since we met with you last, uh, the last community meeting was on February 18th. We met here on Zoom. We had um, 34 attendants, uh, attendees. And then we also put um, the same survey and presentation that was shown in community meeting number one um, online. And uh, through that online survey, we had 53 respondents. Um, so a great showing um, and great feedback. And we'll go through some of the um, results that we heard here together. So we, uh, we had a couple of site organization options that we showed uh, that had options for where the playgrounds um, are located and how the fitness areas uh, relate to those. And in the community meeting, there was a um, pretty strong preference for option C that had both playgrounds right next to each other. Um, and the online survey results um, echoed that same uh, result. And when you combine the results, it was kind of an overwhelmingly um, preference for option C. Um, and so that is the way we've, um, we've started to study the master plan options. Uh, and the other question that we asked um, was trying to get a sense of the look and feel that people preferred. Uh, we looked at options for natural based play structures, for sculptural artful play structures, um, themed options, um, more modern approaches, and then the traditional um, post and platform structures. And um, there's a pretty good spread here, but in both the community meeting and the online survey, there was a preference for um, traditional and natural, um, but they, there was also interest in the sculptural and um, themed as well. So we've um, looked at ways to combine some of these options uh, that we'll see a little bit later in the presentation. Again, here's the, the combined results. Uh, we also heard in the open um, opportunities to provide comment that sand was really important um, and swing, swings, zip lines and climbing and uh, accessibility were all um, things people wanted us to consider. We also asked um, people what their favorite playground components were. Um, and we asked uh, to pick three. Um, again, the community meeting results and the online survey results were pretty aligned. Um, and what we can, let me show you the combined results to see those together. Um, 
slides and gliders, swings, climbing, um, and motion were uh, the big standouts, um, followed by towers um, and the bars, hanging, sensory, narrative, and learning play. And as you know, some of these things cross over and, and can and meet um, multiple uh, of these kind of play components together in, in, in the same uh, elements. So we've, we've been looking at that too. And again, we heard from um, here in the open response, how important sand and climbing and swings um, are. Uh, the next several questions that we asked were about um, who we were talking to, who was taking the survey. Um, and we were delighted to hear that um, almost everybody um, is uh, right around the neighborhood, um, primarily um, in the Northwest Quadrant and a few um, in the Northeast and, um, and other parts of the city. And here's that combined results with 80% um, of the respondents from um, the Northwest Quadrant. And then we asked um, people how they heard about the meeting. Um, a lot of folks heard about it on City Connection. Um, we also got great um, showing from the Biella Elementary School. So thank you, uh, everyone who's um, been connected to the elementary schools with us in, in this uh, process. Um, and a few others from the postcards as well. This is the combined results. We also asked how um, often people came to the park um, and uh, you know, it aligns with where people live. People are coming here. We um, seem to be talking to people who are pretty active users of the park. So that's um, really great to hear. Um, and the last question was how far we that uh, people travel to use the park. And again, it really aligns with um, what we heard in terms of where people um, live that uh, we're talking to. 63% are within a five to 10 minute walking um, period, 14% within a five to 10 minutes driving. So it's great that we are uh, getting, reaching out to um, the real park users in the neighborhood. And then the last piece um, you may have, you may remember from the first community meeting is that we um, did a little bit of work with the, the elementary school that's uh, adjacent to us. There was an all school project where they, the classes uh, got together and did some drawings and illustrations or writings, um, even some precedent imagery collection of what they would like to see in their playground. Um, we got some really great responses. And uh, we've made a word cloud here that uh, takes the pieces of those uh, drawings and information that we got from the school um, and collects them here. So the, the bigger words and the word cloud represent um, the, uh, the, the most common elements that were shown in the drawings. So um, swings, climbing, slides, trees and, gla and grass. I love that um, folks are really thinking about um, what makes parks great, um, with trees and grass and um, things like that. So uh, that was really great to see and um, aligns with what we heard from the, the community as well. So this is a summary page um, showing what we heard and uh, we put this together to really help us chart out um, where we we're going to, ne going to next um, and the master plan options that we were going to study. So with the site organization, this was the, the uh, option that was most favored with the play spaces, mostly pretty connected to each other with the fitness um, moving or adjacent to it. One of the things we heard um, as a side note to this option C was to try to get the adult fitness a little bit closer so that there was visual connection between the playground and the fitness. Um, so that's one uh, alteration that we made to this option C. And then in terms of the character, we, we wanted to start combining some of the interests um, to find ways to um, make really engaging um, kind of approaches to the playground. So we looked at um, providing play structures that could be 
maybe done in natural materials using maybe the Robinia logs, but could be done in uh, a natural in the traditional kind of system with the post and platform structures. We've also looked at um, is there a way to do more of the traditional structures that can be a little bit more sculptural? Um, what is the kind of uh, hybrid of those two schemes? Um, and then we also looked at, um, there was some interest in the themed uh, with the natural. So we looked at ways to combine um, those two characteristics as well. And then the components, um, swing slides, climbing sand, we wanted to really make sure these were um, at the forefront of, um, of the play grounds we're, we're working to design. All right, so that kind of wraps up what we heard. Um, and now we're gonna move into looking at the, um, these three options. So tonight we have three, um, we're calling master plan options. And they um, each have a different playground option. And we'll go through each one of these um, in a little bit more detail. And then towards the end, we'll ask, we'll ask everybody what their preferences are for the, the master plan options, because there's slight differences in um, the way that the overall site and circulation is working. Um, and then we'll also ask about the preferences for the playgrounds. And these are interchangeable. So, um, and after this, we will work to develop these further based on um, the comments uh, and we'll narrow that down to one um, refined scheme. So we'll start now with um, looking at option A. Um, and just to orient you, Whitechapel uh, Way is down at the bottom of the screen. Exeter Drive is here on the left. Um, this is the Bayel Elementary School schoolyard uh, with the where the basketball courts are. Um, and this is the boundary of the existing park. So one of the things that um, in, in working with the Biola Elementary School that we heard was important was to provide um, a, um, an, a more defined edge uh, for the school and um, to provide just a sense of enclosure and um, kind of boundary for that edge. So we looked at um, ways to do that that are really kind of soft. Uh, we have this idea of creating um, a planted edge that works as a garden um, had some new trees and shrubs. Um, and within that, we could put a kind of low garden fence to um, help define that edge, keep the kiddos kind of safe um, within the yard. And then there's some opportunities within that um, garden space to carve out seating places um, that could be in the shades of trees for the children to kind of sit and, um, and watch uh, uh, basketball games or, or playing in the yard. Another element that we um, are interested in for this master plan option is to create um, a real kind of gateway or enhance the gateway that is happening at uh, Whitechapel and Exeter. We also know that we'll be um, required to treat our stormwater runoff of the site. So we wanted to find a way to kind of combine these two elements um, to create um, a nice threshold and gateway for the park. So we're, we've been exploring um, a stormwater garden, that's, that's that linear um, element here that could be um, part rocky, could be part planted, um, and also an opportunity to um, kind of talk and use this as an education opportunity uh, within the park. So there could be signage that explain um, kind of what is happening within that stormwater garden. Um, the paths are, uh, have a similar alignment to um, the past there today. Uh, the playground is located in the center space. Um, in this scheme, um, I'll, I'll show you in a second uh, and in the next slide, uh, our thoughts around this playground option. Um, and tucked around the playground are these little nooks where we could tuck in um, the, the uh, fitness equipment. So Rather than being all kind of clumped together in a yard, we might space them out uh, along this path and they'd have kind of visual access to the playground. So now we're zooming in um, at the playground for option A. And for this approach, we're calling it um, a dry creek. And the idea is that um, this is a kind of natural uh, play environment. We're looking at um, using a, a boulder scree edge. There's a little bit of a grade change between the path and the, and the playground. So 
the idea is to create a kind of boulder edge that kids could climb on and move over. Um, and then within that boulder edge, there could be um, places where we carve out sand and water play opportunities. And um, within that, this is the five to 12 uh, play space. And then this is the two to five play space. So they are still feel really connected as one playground, but there are um, ways to, um, to kind of move through uh, to each one uh, back and forth. And then along this south edge, we've tucked in um, a path that has these picnic nooks um, kind of off the edges. So there's three small um, nooks where we have picnic tables, places to kind of sit and um, watch children and kind of set up for the, for the afternoon. And then uh, within that, there are a um, series of play structures. In this scheme, um, we were able to fit in a zip line. Um, so we were kind of excited about being able to fit that into this playground um, and swings um, and um, small structures. As we, the next step for this will really be to get in and, and figure out the playground structures a little bit further. Right now, I think we're really just doing test fits and trying to define the character of these play spaces. And here's some precedent images of um, what that could be. That boulder edge um, could be a climbing element, could be where we fold in the sand and water play. Um, the play structures could be in that traditional structure with the posts and platforms, but um, within the natural materials. Um, this, uh, this theme of the dry creek could be played out in other uh, boulder or rock elements. And again, the zip line could even be done in um, more natural materials. And then we were looking at ways to um, allow for sand and water um, in uh, a way that are a bit more kind of contained um, and focused. And then there's uh, you know, lots of options for swings and we're interested in exploring some of these kind of group swing um, options. Next, we're looking at master plan B. Um, and it has a lot of similar elements uh, to master plan A. It has a similar edge that we talked about um, in the previous scheme, um, a similar uh, path layout and adult fitness locations. And the primary difference in this scheme is um, the way that the playground um, is working and the, we've added this uh, group picnic space uh, adjacent to the playground. So we wanted to, um, as you remember, we have these kind of small picnic spaces uh, adjacent to the playground like we did in the previous option, but we wanted to provide um, an opportunity for more of a group picnic where you can get um, you know, 20, 30 people together um, with a kind of larger uh, space there. And, and um, there could be some barbecue grills, picnic tables, that kind of space. Um, Right next to the lawn, um, you can imagine hosting a birthday party, baby shower, um, those types of things. And then the playground um, we'll, we'll look at next. For this option, um, we're calling this playground the loops, uh, which is really inspired by the um, kind of artful sculptural um, ideas that we, um, we heard some preference for in the community meeting. So we're looking at, um, doing a path that's a kind of a, a track that kids could follow along, um, chase each other and run from structure to structure and um, really kind of engage. It would also allow for um, lots of great access for you know, um, accessible access throughout the playground. Um, and with that, we would look at um, a, another kind of sculptural edge that could be, um, have rolling topography, places to kind of um, move through this edge. I'll show you some precedent images um, on the next slide for that. And then there are play structures that are also have this kind of loop quality to them that um, could really tie together nicely with this loops path idea. This is that group picnic area. And there's also still the small picnic tables um, along the edge. So these are some of the um, inspiration images for this scheme. This is a really neat product um, that could play off that uh, idea of the path loop as well, that the play structure itself could be a loop. 
And then um, again, looking at that edge, it could have some um, mixed materials or be terraced uh, to again to play off this idea of um, kind of a sculptural art um, approach. And then the last master plan option C um, does a few different things. Um, the edge for the Biella Elementary School um, is this, has this kind of similar idea. Um, but for the entry, we were looking at a more kind of focused stormwater garden that might have a small path um, and a place to kind of sit um, within it. And we've also uh, have additional play adult fitness equipment that wraps down um, to this lower part of the uh, path. So it's, um, it's a little bit more offerings in terms of uh, the various equipment and also provides an opportunity for those equipment to be a little bit further away from the playground um, if that's desired. We're also, um, if I didn't mention before, tucking in um, benches along the plan uh, without the, throughout the park uh, next to the playground, but also um, outside of the playground if you're um, not using the playground. And again, this idea of the stormwater entry element um, that could um, be an educational opportunity um, for the school and children as well. And now we'll zoom in to uh, the last playground option here. And we're calling this one Enchanted Forest. And this is that option that I mentioned before that pulled together um, a theme with um, the natural materials. So we're looking at um, trying to provide a playground that's really shaded by trees. There's a lot of existing mature trees on site. Um, we've located the picnic edge um, within that grove. That's partly why it's kind of jogging around these existing trees to get within the shade of those trees. But we're also exploring adding um, more trees into the playground to make um, this kind of forest environment. And then within that forest, environment, there may be a series of um, kind of playful uh, themed play structures. And I'll show you in a minute um, some precedent images for that. Um, the, the idea of this edge um, is another element slightly different in this scheme. This may be more planted um, and have more uh, opportunities for um, kind of nature to wrap in. And then also the sand and water play again um, within that those edge moments. And then here are some precedent um, images for this. Um, I was really excited about um, a child who mentioned on the first community meeting this idea of um, mushrooms, the jumping mushrooms or moving mushrooms. So we wanted to start thinking about that and really kind of really inspired this um, this idea of enchanted forest. But there may be playful elements. Um, that take on that theme, um, opportunities to introduce color um, along with that. And, um, you know, really trying to take advantage of the existing trees that we have on site um, and place children uh, within that tree canopy. And just to give you um, a sense of scale, we wanted to um, let people know about how big the, the new playground is that we're looking at. So this is the, the plans we've been looking at and the, the footprint is pretty similar along all of the options. Um, and this red dashed line um, is, this is the same dashed line over on an aerial of Coffee Park playground. So you can kind of get a sense, this is that where that large structure is here with the um, canopy, if you're familiar with it. Um, the Dutch floor playground is coming in um, about 12,700 square feet um, and the coffee park is um, about 15,600 square feet. So it's a little bit smaller than the coffee park playground, but very much in that zone. But, um, so hopefully that's helpful. So these are the three um, master plan options. Um, and within them, there are three playground options. Um, and I know I just gave you a lot of information <laughs> and shared a lot of um, a lot of ideas. So we wanted to take this moment to um, open it up for clarifying questions about um, what I just presented. And I wanted to also let you know that there'll be an opportunity to provide comments um, and tell tell us about your preferences um, 
a little bit later in the presentation. Um, so I'd really like to kind of preserve this opportunity now um, to ask questions. If there's anything that um, you said that I wasn't clear or um, any anything that might help me help you understand the proposals. I think if you um, can raise your hand, if you have any questions, um, one of our hosts will um, unmute you to ask your question. We'll go ahead and start by um, answering some of the questions that have been typed in the, into the Q&A and that will give people a little bit of time also to generate additional questions um, or maybe have their question answered. Um, okay. The first question is, um, unsure if what a stormwater garden is, are there any current Santa Rosa parks that have one as a point of reference? Yes, um, so stormwater garden takes, um, so when it rains, the water falls onto the ground um, and then it typically needs to get collected and put into our storm drains to, to leave the site. Um, and the state of California requires that um, projects collect a certain amount of that water and um, either store it or clean it before it's released. Um, and so this is a requirement of, of any projects over a certain size and this project would, would meet those requirements. So the stormwater garden is uh, collecting the site, the water that falls on the site um, and usually it's collected at the low point. Um, and in our case, the low point is um, around, around this corner um, of Whitechapel and Exeter. And it will, uh, the water will, will have a special soil section below the rocks and or plants. And the water, as it moves through the, the, that soil section, it actually gets cleaned. Um, and is a um, way to kind of hold water uh, during big storm events so we don't over overwhelm our systems and our uh, stormwater systems. Um, and, it, and it also cleans water um, and allows it to infiltrate. And yes, there's some at Coffee Park. Um, there are circles that are placed in, in the lawns um, and they look, they look different. Um, they can be boulders, sometimes they're planted. I think mostly in Santa Rosa, they're more of a rock garden um, approach. Thank you. I will just also add really quick to it for folks um, if they want another more natural um, view of this, we have something very similar at Bear Neighborhood Park, which is in the Roseland area of the city, if you want to see something somewhat similar to this in action. So um, just wanted to add that in. Thanks, Jen. Um, Haley, can you talk a little bit more about what water play is um, in the parks and in, in these three master plan options. Sure, sure. Um, we're, we're looking at introducing small amounts of water uh, to uh, work with the sand element. So it's, it's um, not spraying water. It's not a water park elements. It's more of um, oftentimes in parks you see a hand pump um, that kids use and it releases a small amount of water and usually you can release that into a, a sand area and that allows kids to make sand castles you know you know you, when you get sand wet they can start to use it in a different way so um, we're looking at ways to to offer that opportunity um, the next question is wouldn't natural made playgrounds give kids splinters and peel bark off? Good question. Um, what the natural play elements um, are often the material that's used is um, a robinia, which is a black locust tree. Uh, sometimes they also use Alaskan yellow cedar. Um, and what they do is they harvest those timbers, they actually hand sand them. Um, so they're very smooth. Um, they're very hard woods and very um, resistant to to, the, to weather. Um, and then they put them together to create these play structures. So they're very safe um, and very soft. And there's a nice example at um, Taylor Mountain Regional Park. Great. Yeah, a lot of the play manufacturers are, are making these now. So the, we'll, 
be more and more likely to see them pop up. Thank you. The next question is, what are springs? Springs. So, is there more context for that? Oh, springs. Yeah, okay. Yeah, no, I know. I, I Sorry, <laughs> got it. Um, springers, they're those small um, play structures that um, sometimes you can ride on them. Um, there's a spring below. They're, they're more for the smaller kids, the two to five age. Sometimes they're horses or other animals, or sometimes they're little train cars. And you get inside them and you can kind of rock back and forth. They also make spring boards where there's a, a spring with a kind of platform and you can hop from one to the next. Um, so there's any kind of spring mounted um, play structure that they're typically smaller found in the, in the two to five uh, playgrounds. Thank you. The next question is, has there been any consideration to the sloped area north of the playground and west of Biella Seems like a great place for the zip line or natural play features like water play, creek, etc. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, we've had several conversations about that um, that piece, the triangle piece. I think is is what the question is about. Um, what, what's going on with that triangle piece? Um, given the, the the proximity to the school and um, and the, it's also doesn't have great lines of sight from the streets. Um, I think the team felt like um, the best location for the playground was actually uh, not in the, that space um, to help give the school a little bit of privacy and um, make sure that there's there's decent eyes on the on any kind of uh, elements within the park. Thank you. Uh, the next question is, in option B, can you explain the barbecue picnic area in more detail? Yeah, so um, there's there's some, all these schemes have um, a couple of small picnic tables wrapping the, the playground. In option B, we're really gathering them together um, where you can have a larger party. So, and then maybe barbecue grills the freestanding barbecue charcoal grills that you can come and cook. Um, there could be prep counters. So this is really for um, hosting um, events or hosting groups of people to come together where you may be actually making a meal, um, barbecuing food, um, that type of thing. Where the other community, where the other um, picnic tables are more um, day, you know, like an hour, a couple hour use. You may set up your, sh when I go to the playground with my, daughter, we, first thing we do is where are we gonna put our stuff, right? You got all kinds of stuff. Um, and so usually those, those smaller picnic tables use a playground are really for that to come kind of set up shop um, while you're playing. And where the larger barbecue is um, more focused around a cooking um, focused uh, event group gathering. Hope that's clear. Thank you. Um, the last question, we have is the, the creek is a great idea, but the one at Bear hasn't been used for in use for a long time. Um, is this due to a water shortage issue? So this is probably for Jen. I'll jump in here for the one at, at Bear, and uh, I, I'm not exactly sure if there is a water if there's a maintenance problem with it, but. Um, what we do with the with the creeks because the one at Bear has a hand pump, so a user could pump water into it for a little short space and um, and play. And um, like any water feature like that, we turn our um, drinking fountains and things like that off through the winter, and then we make take a point at time where usually it's April first when we turn everything back on. Uh, but since we've been in COVID, we have been holding off on those uh, to discourage more heavier use of the parks. We want people to stay in smaller groups. And so that might be contributing to that. I would have to check with our maintenance staff if there's something else going on. But at least, um, you know, that one operates just a tad bit differently than I, what I think um, Plural is offering here. There wouldn't be necessarily a hand pump or 
Um, but it's that same idea <clears throat> because like uh, Haley mentioned, uh, we will be required to treat water on site or hold water on site. So we, we need to do something. And um, so Plural has presented some really nice options for you all to choose from. That is the end of the typed questions. Um, does anyone else have a question related to the master plan options? Please raise your hand if you do. I don't see any hands, um, so let's continue on. Okay, great. So we're gonna open um, some Zoom uh, polls. Uh, if you haven't done those before, they will pop up on your screen um, and we'll ask you a question and you'll have the opportunity to, to click on an answer. Uh, so there'll be a series of uh, questions um, related to who's here tonight. Um, and then we will uh, jump into asking people about their preferences. The, ready for the first round? Let's go ahead and start the first round. You want me to ask the, um, the background questions first? Yeah, okay. please. Okay, so similar to last time, I just wanted to talk through this a little bit just in case there's somebody new, but similar to last time, you can go ahead and get started clicking in and scrolling up and down to make sure you're answering all the questions. But these are some easy ones to, to test um, uh, for the larger uh, site-specific questions. So where do you live in the city? How did you hear about this meeting? It's always helpful for us. How often uh, do you frequent the park? And how far do you travel to use the park? So um, we'll give everyone some time to fill those in and look back to our hosts to chime in when they think we're ready to go. But um, certainly go ahead and start clicking away and inserting your answers and, and make sure you scroll all the way to the end. Emily, let us know when we're ready to um, move to the next slide. It's been 30 seconds since the vote tally has changed. We have 85% reporting or 17 of 20 people. Can you give another 20 seconds? Um, I will end the poll and share the results. Great. So if you can see that on your screen now, it's the same thing. You can scroll up and down to check it out yourself. Uh, but essentially, where do you live? We have a lot of folks in Northwest participating tonight, which is which is great. That's the quadrant our park is in. <laughs> and how did you hear about this meeting? A lot of folks from the elementary school, that's great. And City Connections website, fantastic. And how often do you frequent? Very similar to what we heard last time, daily and weekly, great. And how far do you travel? Again, five, 10 minute walk, 
um, like Haley mentioned, it's consistent with folks who live nearby. So great. Go ahead and close that. Great. All right. Now that you're all warmed up on the Zoom polls, let's get to <laughs> what we're all here for. Um, all right. So next, we'd love to hear um, which master plan options that you most prefer. Um, so if you could pick one, I think there's a Zoom poll that's going to come up. Um, and in the open question and comment, there'll be an opportunity to say, you know, there's there's elements in these that can be mixed and matched. Um, there was a question about, can the group picnic be in the other schemes? Yes. Um, those are the kinds of things we love to hear from you. Um, and we'll, we'll, we'll get to that in the open comment, uh, but we'd love to just hear um, what option you're kind of leaning towards right now. And then the next question will be about which playground uh, you are preferring. Maybe while you're thinking about it, I can just talk a little bit through about the about some of the differences. Um, option A and B are pretty similar. They both have this um, kind of linear uh, stormwater garden at the entry, um, and then the four group fitness spaces around the top part of the playground. Um, option B is different in that it has the larger group picnic area for it, um, and then option C has more planting kind of around the playground and has um, more fitness, adult fitness spaces. Um, and then it's got more of a focused um, stormwater garden around the entry with the loop, with the path to kind of get into that garden element. Number voting hasn't changed in about 30 seconds. Um, I'll give you another 20 seconds and then we'll close the poll. Everyone can see the results. It looks like um, a preference for option C uh, with 50% and option B next, and then um, option A. So it'd be great to hear from you um, when we open up for questions and comments later, uh, uh, what you like about each one of these options. Right, um, and then we also would love to hear uh, which playground you're preferring. Um, and again, these are really just directions. Um, that's where we are in the stage of the design. We'll really develop these further and, and pick out specific equipment um, as we move and refine the plans. But these are really um, approaches to, to the playground and some ideas of, of how they may unfold. Um, we have the Dry Creek, um, which is a focus around um, Boulder play with natural materials. Um, option B, we're calling the loops, um, meant to be kind of artful, sculptural um, elements and play structures. And then option C, we're calling the enchanted forest, um, which is looking at a playground that has lots of trees and um, play elements uh, focused around that theme. So we'll uh, send this Zoom poll up Whenever Emily's ready, there it is.
results haven't changed in 30 seconds. So I'll give um, another 20 seconds um, for anyone who wants to put in a vote. We've got a pretty even spread here. Got 39% for the Dry Creek, 28% um, for the Loops, and 33% for the Enchanted Forest. All right. Um, again, it'd be great to hear uh, what you like in, um, in the open comment section, which we're moving to next. So thank you all for your uh, input so far. I think we're um, ready to open up to questions and public comments. Please raise your hand if you um, have any questions or comments, particularly in related to those last two questions that were just asked. Um, our first speaker is Katie. I'm going to um, give you permission to speak. Um, you'll have three minutes for your comments. Uh, and then we'll move on to the next speaker. Go ahead. Okay, hi. Um, the designs are all super cute. Um, I love the Enchanted Forest was my favorite, but um, some of the elements I did see, uh, such as uh, ground tunnels built into a berm, um, do look kind of problematic as like trash magnets, as well as places to hide for um, you know people that might be experiencing transiency. And was there any thought to um, these kind of concerns um, regarding visibility and, and uh, trash and things like that in the plans? Thanks, Katie. Um, we haven't decided whether there be actual tunnels um, in them. Um, I think the, the present images are um, maybe always a little bit too specific. Um, I think if we do introduce any element like that, we'll, I agree, we'll definitely need to make sure that it's open visible and safe, um, but it's it's likely that uh, we won't have any type of tunnel element like that. So, but thank you. Are there any other questions or comments? And if you'd like to um, make a comment and you're calling in by phone, you'll just need to um, dial star nine. Okay, our next speaker is V. Uh, v, I'm giving you permission to speak. Please unmute your microphone and provide your comment. You'll have three minutes, after which um, we'll move on to the next, the next speaker. This is my son, Benjamin, who's 11. I was hoping uh, and also asking if you could uh, do uh, sand everywhere like uh, we already have on the playground right now. Thanks, Ben. Jen, do you want this one? Sure, I can, I can add from a city perspective. Um, one of the things we look at is reducing the amount of sand underneath playgrounds because we have to use a different surfacing. So if we have a fall, if someone falls from a playground, there's a different surface that uh, bounces a little and sand doesn't bounce back. This is, a, I'm trying to explain it in different ways that aren't super technical, but essentially we want uh, no broken bones from falling. We want to have some bouncing happening if someone falls. So that's why we pull the sand back away from underneath playgrounds. Uh, but we do want to add sand. That's one of the ideas that's been put forth and we can incorporate sand areas. They just can't be underneath the playground areas.
Does anyone else have anything they would like to say before we move on to our next steps? Katie has another question. Um, go ahead and unmute Katie and um, you'll have another three minutes for your comment. Uh, okay, just another question since there doesn't seem to be a lot. Um, was there any uh, consideration about speed bumps or a stop sign on Exeter and Whitechapel in the plan? We haven't explored any speed bumps. We are uh, looking at improving the um, crosswalks or you know, in up, updating the crosswalks and the ramps to, to access the park, uh, both at the corner of um, Whitechapel and Exeter and um, also further up on Exeter at the, um, uh, I forget which court that is, um, there's an existing ramp there, so improving that connection as well. Is there, could you say a little bit more about that, Katie? Are you, are you, um, are there some fast moving cars or? Okay, yeah, so uh, we, um, we are right in, in the Whitechapel area, so we can see everything that you guys are planning. There is a, a lot of traffic that drives much too fast up and down Exeter, especially. It's not necessarily going across Whitechapel because it dead ends, but many, many people, even during school kids hours, will race down that, that thoroughfare going from Jennings to um, Putney to get to college. So there's, okay. we've noticed a lot of traffic there, even when there's a lot of kids and people in the park. Okay, great, thank you. The next comment um, comes from Jesse. Jesse, I'm enabling your speaking permissions. Please unmute your microphone. I'll lower your hand and you'll have three minutes to provide your comment. All right, hi. Um, great uh, designs, by the way, first of all. Um, First, I just want to clarify my uh, earlier question about that triangle portion. I agree that it wouldn't be a good suitable place for the actual playground, but I just thought since you were trying to incorporate a zip line somewhere, it looked like from option A, there was a zip line like in the middle of the playground. I just thought since it's sloped already, maybe it would be a good site for the, for the zip line. Um, my second question uh, would be, um, was there any consideration for bathrooms? I can jump in there, Haley, if you're okay with that. From the, yep. So for restrooms, we're really not considering restrooms in neighborhood parks. Uh, most of our neighborhood parks do not include um, restrooms. It's an extremely expensive addition, but beyond just the expense, if it was something that was highly desired in this neighborhood, we would look to um, an enclosure with a portable similar to Coffee Park. That's an easier, low cost way of providing access to that. Although they typically aren't part of the design process for a neighborhood park, they are added in larger community-based projects where we have people hanging out for hours versus a neighborhood park, which is maybe, maybe you're not spending as much time there. But certainly if that's something that this neighborhood would like, we can, we're happy to hear from you and have that discussion about including a, a portable restroom enclosure, if that's something you would desire. The next um, speaker is Concerned Citizen. Um, I am enabling your speaking permissions. Please unmute your microphone. Um, I will lower your hand and you'll have three minutes to provide your comment. Hello, hi, uh, thanks for letting me comment. Um, I just had a comment about the, the picnic, the proposed large picnic area. And I, I think it it concerns me that um, uh, I'm wondering who would who would maintain that uh, if there's food preparation, you're, it could be a mess. Um, people don't tend to maybe take care of cleaning up after themselves. So uh, would the city come in and provide maintenance on that? Um, so I'm kind of voting no on a big picnic area. And I, I also want to second the um, the fast traffic uh, along uh, Exeter. Thanks. And I can jump in just about the city maintenance. Yes, this this park is 
uh, will be a combination of maintenance between a contracted service and our park maintenance staff. And we do have a uh, barbecue um, area at Bear Neighborhood Park, which might operate somewhat similar to this. And again, I, you know, Haley, you can jump in, but really we're looking at types of areas and stuff. A lot of the details certainly aren't worked out. And, and we love hearing from you tonight and hearing some of the things that you're concerned about or some of the things you'd like, because it helps direct us as we narrow down the focus. Um, the next speaker is B. I am giving you permission to speak to B. Um, please unmute your microphone and provide your comments. Hi, sorry if this was um, discussed in the first half of the meeting. I came in late. Uh, something we discussed in the first meeting was um, providing activities for all ages, not just um, young kids on the playground, things like we've seen at Coffee Park, like cornhole and ping pong tables, things like that. Is, is that something that's still in the mix? Thanks, V. Um, yeah, I think it could be. Um, it's something that we can explore. Are there, um, you said cornhole, what else did you have in mind? Is and Haley, I just wanted to say, I think I heard uh, ping pong and, and something similar to coffee, coffee as chess tables and things like that. So um, hopefully we captured everything V, <laughs> but let us know. Yeah, I just saw some great cornhole, uh, concrete cornhole boards uh, today in my research. Are there any other questions or ideas that you'd like to share? Christy Silva has um, a comment. Uh, Christy, I'm enabling your speaking permissions. Um, please unmute your microphone and provide your comment. Hi, this is Luke. I'm Christy's husband. And I was wanting to make a comment that I've seen a lot of graffiti in the park over the past few years that we lived here. and I, I myself have gone over there to uh, to remove it with some stuff I got from a paint store. I was just going to say, if possible, where wherever considerations could be made to maybe make it um, make the materials out of stuff that would be easy to get paint off of might be a good idea because it seems like a continuous problem, and I'm not sure if you guys were aware of that. And I'll jump in there, Haley, from a city perspective, we, we definitely are aware, aware graffiti is a problem in, in, in quite a few parks, unfortunately. Um, we do have a, a team that specifically responds to that. And um, typically any, any new park is going to be designed to have that sort of anti-graffiti material within it. Um, that's a major consideration for any next detailed step we take. But I'll let Haley chime in for anything Anything you want to add to that? I just, I just was going to echo what you said. Um, we, we try to put the anti-graffiti coatings on um, on nearly everything, and it doesn't obviously keep people from doing it, but it does it. It does help um, clean it off. Any other comments that? you'd like to share, please feel free to raise your hand. And if not, we'll move on to our next steps. Okay, I'm not, I'm not seeing any more hands. We're ready to move to the next part of the presentation. Okay, so we just wanted to stop here and, and remind you all that um, 
this, uh, well, all the questions that we've asked you tonight are gonna be available again for anybody in the neighborhood that would like to participate. Certainly, we appreciate any conversations you will have with your neighbors and those living uh, around you that are friends, et cetera, family. Um, anyone could participate in the survey. It's gonna be at our Recreation and Parks website, which is srcity.org slash park dash projects. But of course, if you go to our website, it's pretty easy to click on the park projects website and then um, you'll see Dutch floor on there and there's everything you ever wanted to know about what we're doing. And of course the latest surveys are on there and all of the past things that we have done at the last meeting are present there. And any new future information is always gonna be on that website as well. So I just wanna push that forward to you all as a reminder that um, for anyone who couldn't attend tonight, that is certainly available and we uh, welcome participation. There's, uh, there's, a, there's definitely a way to keep the communication going. I think we can go to the next slide. And so this is just a reminder, Haley went over the schedule early on, but our next step is to come back in the summer with a follow-up to this meeting to talk about all the um, information we've heard from you all tonight, which we appreciate, and anything we collect online as well. Um, and we'll be coming back to you in the summer with that. And we've got, we're looking at early 2022 for um, end of construction. So hopefully that just a little reminder of the schedule there. Next slide. And while <laughs> I've been the one helping you all tonight, navigating along with Haley, um, really the park is, the, the project is being uh, managed by Tim Bernard, who's doing the hosting duties tonight. It takes a lot of us to do all of this behind the scenes. Um, so certainly if there's um, something you need to talk about with us that is, you can't get on the website or anything else or any other questions, um, please feel free to reach out to Tim Bernard at tbernard at srcity.org, or you can call phone number direct, which is of course our area code 707-543-3969. And our website is always available to you as well. That's the srcity.org park projects. And um, I, I, I just wanted to take a moment too to let you know, I forgot to mention in the beginning, I, I wanted to let you know as we talked about the process that this uh, project will go through and we have a series of three neighborhood meetings typically and then we go on to the Board of Community Services and we do have our chair, Carol Quant, attending tonight. I just wanted to pass along, it's nice to know that we do have board members in attendance keeping an eye on and. And, and paying attention to what's happening uh, because this will be coming before the board for a recommendation for approval at some point in the future. So I wanted to add that on there. Um, uh, but getting back to this, I just wanted to let you know this is not the end of the conversation. And certainly we hope that you do keep in contact with us. And if we can help you in any way, navigate how your opinions, how, how to get your opinions to us, let us know. Haley, do you have anything else to add? And there's one last question. Oh, okay, fantastic. Um, will the community be able to participate in a live versus Zoom discussion before decisions are made on this park master plan, or will we be in virtual mode for the future discussion? That is the million dollar question. Um, <laughs> it's really hard to navigate right now. We know that our city council process is looking at a hybrid meeting sometime in late June um for council items and likely board meetings will follow that but the next community meeting is probably not going to be an in-person meeting until uh, unless we are completely open in the state and um one of the things that limits us as a public agency are um cal osha regulations as well as uh, containment sometimes if we have an in-person meet, meeting we don't know exactly who's going to attend and if there's still any state restrictions or local county health orders related to size of gathering we'll have to we'll have to meet virtually again um, but certainly if we can do um, an in-person meeting that would be preferable for all of us as well because it's really great to have the back and forth conversation so if we can we will um, but we're not sure yet so 
Sorry, I don't have a specific answer for you, but um, certainly check our website. Um, as things change and progress, we'll put things there on the website. That's our best way to communicate and get information out to you all um, on a fast, quick pace method. So are there any other questions, uh, Tim, that popped up? Yes, there, there is another question. Um, I feel like the large grass area doesn't get used much. Maybe a couple of disc golf goals is a comment. And another comment is, um, how about a small dark dog park area in the grassy area? Great, fantastic. And don't forget to tell everybody you know <laughs> to provide their comments on the survey because it, it really helps us get, get us to um, make sure we're designing the park that you all want and that you're going to love to attend and be part of. So I just wanted to thank you all very much. I know um, it's tough. We've all, you know, working, we've got busy lives and doing different things. I just wanted to thank you and turn it back to Haley if you have any closing information you'd like to share. Just to thank everyone for coming um, and echo your sentiments, Jen. Uh, please do pass along um, any other ideas or comments you have. Um, for Tim, it'll go back to us and we will um, work on Coming together, our next step is to um, take all these comments and refine it down to one plan. Um, and we'll be presenting that plan at the, at the next community meeting. So um, any other ideas, please um, pass them along and they'll be considered for the, the final plan. Thank you all, good night. Thank you.